We're now ready to begin making our first cast. The method we're going to use to make our first casting is a method called rotocasting. Roto stands for rotating. It's straightforward in terms of procedure. You simply pour plaster into a mold and then you rotate the mold around. The plaster is then evenly distributed all over the surface of the inside of the mold and we hopefully, hopefully end up creating an even casting. The castings should come out hollow unless you do too many layers of course and therefore if you do it right they should be pretty light. Rotocasting doesn't use any burlap, especially inside this type of mold, so it's not as strong as a cast reinforced with burlap, but it's very likely going to be more than strong enough, especially for something this small or anything that's about the size of a portrait. When you make your molds, you want to think about how you plan to cast your sculpture inside it, as a mohawk mold doesn't make it easy to reinforce the casting with burlap which might make this method unsuitable for certain types of castings, or certain types of figures, rather. Getting burlap through this tiny opening at the bottom of the mold would be very difficult. There are certainly some more finesse to this, however, which we'll go into in details about right now. Rotocasting works well because we use multiple layers of plaster to build up thickness. The rotating makes sure that the layers are of even thickness and we don't have any pooling of plaster at the top of the head for example, creating uneven weight distribution and eventually an unbalanced cast. I'm going to do three layers for this casting, which means that I'll let the plaster set up and become firm to the touch between layers. Currently we're on the first layer. I pour material into the mold and rotate, building up thickness as I go. I pour the plaster out once I've rotated a few times and covered the entire surface. The thin layer of plaster inside the mold dries out faster than the big blob of plaster in my bowl, and so therefore I can pour the same plaster mixture back into the mold and keep rotating, building up thickness. I go back and forth doing this until all the plaster in the bowl has been used or it becomes too firm to keep working with. Once the plaster stops moving, stops flowing, it becomes more like a cream cheese in terms of uh, texture, then you know it's time to stop and let the mold rest for a few minutes before starting the next layer. Because we're using thin layers here and not pouring a solid casting, the chances of capturing air bubbles on the surface of our cast should become less. I also tap the mold on the table lightly which forces the air bubbles to rise off of the surface of the silicone and therefore they won't show up on the surface of the casting hopefully. Some places ended up being a bit tough to reach without having the plaster pour out of the mold and all over myself and in those places I used a brush to get some plaster on there. Subsequent layers will help even out the inside surface as I build up thickness, and so this issue will sort of get solved as we keep working. Don't stop rotating the mold until the plaster is at a point where it doesn't start pooling. The last thing we want is a super thick top of the head section for example, that makes the casting unbalanced. Same thing would happen if you had a super heavy front of the face, for example. Keep working the mold until the plaster doesn't flow inside the mold anymore. Once this is the case, it's time to stop the first layer. By this time, we should have plaster everywhere, covering the entire inside surface of the mold, 
The layer should be thick enough to where no silicone color shows through the plaster. If the plaster is too thin, we can get a strange surface texture and sometimes the plaster doesn't quite stick well to the silicone once it's super thin and sort of spreads apart a little bit, which could be a problem. As long as all those things are taken care of and you're finished with the first layer, now it's time to let the mold sit until we do the second layer. Plaster goes through stages as it sets up and becomes hard and solid plaster. At first, before we mix it, it's powder, of course, then right when it's mixed, it's very liquid, then it's going to slowly become sort of a cream cheese kind of texture, and you can still work it. Then it becomes crumbly like cottage cheese, and you should really stop working with it then. Then it's going to become firm, but still soft, more like a damp cracker. Then it's going to become hard and cold. Then it's going to become warm before starting to cool down. It can take a while after it cools off before it becomes properly dry and as hard as it's ever going to become. It's important to know the timing of these stages because they impact when certain things need to happen when working with plaster. For example, once the plaster starts heating up, which can be around 15 to 20 minutes after you first mix it, depending on the type of plaster you use, it is going to start dissipating the moisture inside of it. And when this happens, the old plaster won't stick well to the new plaster that's added on top of it. This means that all subsequent work where we would like the plaster to stick to itself properly should be done before the plaster starts heating up. After a few hours of letting plaster heat up and set up, we can open the mold. Ideally, you should wait until the plaster has cooled down after warming up before opening the mold. And if I can, I prefer to wait overnight. Though you can usually open it without too many issues after a few hours. The plaster is still going to be pretty damp and soft at this point, so be careful with it. Opening a mold like this can be very easy. It's a very simple mold, though taking your time while prying the silicone off is going to be important because it can catch on thinner sections and break them. Sections like the edge of the nose hole and the teeth, for example. Try to break the suction of the silicone before removing it from the plaster surface. I start by prying at the mohawk cut from the opening in the mold up to the hole in the mold where the mohawk cut ends. From there I move outwards towards the sides of the head and then towards the front of the face from the sides, releasing a little bit of silicone from the plaster at the time. As you can see, the casting came out without any glaring faults. There are some small air bubbles and of course that little weird protrusion where the wooden dowel was inserted into the clay, leading to a hole in our mold which we tried to fill but didn't fill perfectly. The bottom at the opening is a bit rough as well and we have some clay residue on the plaster. All of this is going to be easily fixed in post. No big air bubbles or missing sections is the most important part and that was achieved and the little amount of plaster residue 
or clay residue can be scraped off or left on the piece for a nice patina effect. A little bit of retouching is always to be expected when you make casts. So overall, this is a pretty successful casting.